Flat Stanley, Stanley's Christmas Adventure. She was the sort of little girl who liked to be sure of things. So she went all over Snow City checking up. The elves had done their work at the post office. Mel elves had read the letters, making lists of who wanted what, and the great workshop. The doll room, the toy plant, the game mill, gift elves had filled the orders, taking care as to color and size and style. And the wrap shed, the gifts lay ready wrapped now in gay paper with holly and pine cones, sorted by country, by city or village, by road or lane or street. The rap elves teased her. Don't trust us, eh? Snooping, we call this miss. Poo, said the little girl. Well done, elves. Good work. But at home in Snow City Square, all was not well. Don't slam the door, dear, said her mother, weeping. Your father's having his nap. Mother, what's wrong? He won't go this year, he says. The mother sobbed. He's been so cross lately, but I never... What? Why won't he go? They've lost faith. Don't care anymore, he says. Surely not everyone, I said. Think of your favorite letter, the one by your desk. He just growled at me. Pooh, said the girl. It's not fair, really. I mean, everything's ready. Why not now, dear, said the mother. It's been a dreadful day. In the little office at the back of the house, the girl studied the letter her mother had mentioned, framed with others on the wall. I am a regular boy, except that I got flat, the letter said. From an accident, I was going to ask for new clothes but my mother already bought them she had to because of the flatness so i'm just writing to say don't bother about me have a nice holiday my father says be careful driving <clears throat> there are lots of bad drivers this time of year the girl thought for a moment and an ideal came to her hmm well why not she said she looked again at the letter the name lamb chop was printed across the top and an address it was signed stanley usa it was two nights before christmas and all through the house not a lamb chop was stirring but something was stanley lamb chop sat up in his bed listen someone said rat it was more like grat said his younger brother arthur from his bed in the living room i think the brothers tiptoed down the stairs for a moment all was silence in the darkened living room then came a thump ouch said a small voice drat again are you a burglar arthur called did you hurt yourself? I am not a burglar, said the voice. Where's the... Ah, uh, the lights came on. The brother stared. Before the fireplace, by the Christmas tree, stood a slender, dark-haired little girl wearing a red jacket and skirt, both trimmed with white fur. I banged it twice, she said, rubbing her knee, coming down the chimney and just now. We do have a front door, you know, said Stanley. Well, so does my house, but, you know, this time of year, the girl sounded a bit nervous. Actually, I've never done this before. Let's see. 
Ha ha ha, Susan's grazing greeting. Ha ha ha. Ha ha to you, said Arthur. What's so funny? Funny, said the girl. Oh, ho ho ho, I meant. I'm Sir Christmas. Who are you? Arthur Lambchop, said Arthur. That's my brother Stanley. It is, but he's not flat. He was, but I blew him up, Arthur explained, with a bicycle pump. Oh, no. I wish you hadn't, Sarah Christmas sank into a chair. Drat, it's all going wrong. Perhaps I shouldn't have can't come. But that's how I am. Headstrong, my mother says. She, excuse me, Stanley said, but where are you from? And why did you come, said Arthur. Sarah. Sarah told them. Mr. and Mrs. Lampchock were reading in bed. A tap came at the door, and then Stanley's voice. Hey, can I come in? Mr. and Miss, Mrs. Lampchop cared greatly for proper speech. Hey is for horses, Stanley, she said, and not can, dear. You may come in. <clears throat> Stanley came in. What is the... A explanation, my boy, of this late call, said Miss Lamptop, remembering past surprises. You have not, I see, become flat again. Has a genie come to visit, or perhaps the President of the United States has called? Miss Lamptop smiled. You are very amusing, George. Arthur and I were in bed, said Stanley, but we heard a noise and went to see. It was a girl called Sarah Christmas from Snow City. She talks a lot. She says her father says he won't come this year, but Sarah thinks he might change his mind if I ask him to, because I wrote him a letter once that he liked. She wants me to go with her to Snow City in her father's sleigh. It's a at the North Pole, I think, Stanley caught his breath. I said I'd have to ask you first. Quite right, said Miss Lampchop. Mr. Lampchop went to the bathroom and drank a glass of water to calm himself. Now then, Stanley, he said, returning. You have greatly startled us, surely. Put on your robe, George, said Miss Lampchop. Let us hear for ourselves what this visitor has to say. This is delicious, Sarah Christmas. Sip the hot chocolate Miss Lamp Chop had served them all. My mother makes it too, with cinnamon in it, and little cookies with her glance had fallen on the mantelpiece. What's that pinned up there? Christmas stockings, Stanley said. The blue one's mine. But the other, the great square thing, it's a pillowcase, Arthur blushed. My stocking wouldn't do. I have very small feet. Pooh, said Sarah. Sarah laughed. You wanted extra gifts, so... Sarah, dear, Miss Lampchop said, Your father has he truly made up his mind, you think? Oh, yes, Sarah sighed. But I thought, Stanley being flat, that really interested him. I mean, I couldn't be sure, but if nobody ever did anything without... You seem a very nice girl, Sarah. Mr. Lamptop gave a little laugh. But you have been joking with us, surely I. The phone rang, and he answered it. Hello, George, the caller said. This is your neighbor, Frank Smith. I know it's late, but I must congratulate you on your Christmas lawn display. Best lawn, said Mr. Lamptop. Display the sleigh and those lifelike reindeer. What makes them move about like that? Batteries, I suppose? Just a moment, Frank. Mr. Lamptock went to the window and, and looked out. Miss Lamptock beside him. <clears throat> My goodness, she said. One, two, three, four, eight. And such a pretty sleigh. Mr. Lamptock returned to the phone. They are of life, aren't they? Goodbye. Thank you for calling, Frank. See, I'm not a joking kind of person, actually, said Sir Christmas. Now, 
My idea might work even without the flatness. Do let Stanley go. To the North Pole, said Miss Lamptock. At night, by himself? Good gracious, Sarah. It's not fair asking Stanley, but not me, said Arthur, feeling hurt. It's always like this. I never... Oh, poos, Eric Christmas smiled. Actually, you could all go. It's a very big sleigh. Mr. and Mrs. Lamptop looked at each other, then at Stanley and Arthur, then at each other again. Stanley just might make a difference, George, Miss Lamptop said. And if we can all go... Quite right, said Mr. Lamptop. Sir, we will accompany company you to Snow City. Hooray, shouted Stanley and Arthur and Sarah too. Mrs. Lamptop thought they should wait until Frank Smith had gone to bed. Imagine the gossip, she said, were, were he to see our reindeer fly away. Mr. Lamptop called his office to leave a message on the night time answer machine. He would not be in tomorrow, he said as he had been called unexpectedly out of town. There, cried Stanley. By the window, the smith's light is out. The lamp top changed quickly from pajamas to warmer clothing and followed Sarah to the sleigh. Welcome aboard, said Sarah from the driver's seat, the lamp top sitting on little benches that made the big sleigh resemble a roofless bus could sarcastically contained their excitement. The night sky shone bright with stars and from the windows of nearby houses red and green Christmas lights twinkled over snow, snowy lawns and streets. Before them the eight reindeer, fur shiny in the moonlight, tossed their antlers heads. Ready when you are, Sarah, Miss, Mr. Lambchock said. Good, Sarah cleared her throat. <coughs> Fasten your seat belts, please. We are about to depart for Snow City. My name is Sarah. I guess you know that. And I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Please do not move about without permission of the sleigh master. That's me, at least right now. And obey whatever instructions may. Please, said Arthur. Oh, all right. The lamp chocks fastened their seat belts and Sarah took up the reins. Ready, one, ready, two, three. Just numbers, cried Mr. Lamp Chop. Why we know such lovely reindeer names Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, Blitzen, shouted Arthur. They're from a home we know. Those are good names, said Sarah. Ready, one. Through eight, the reindeer pawed the ground, jingling their harness bells. Now, said Sarah, the jingling stopped suddenly and a great silence fell. Now a silver mist rose, swirling about the sleigh. The startled lamp chops could see nothing beyond the mist, not their house nor the houses of their neighbors, not the twinkling Christmas lights, not the bright stars above. There was only the silver mist everywhere, cool against their cheeks. What is this, Sarah? Miss Lamptop called. Are we not to proceed to Snow City? Sarah's voice came cheerfully through the mist. We have proceeded. We're there. Beyond the mist, excited voices rose. Sarah's back with strangers, big ones. There's, where's she been? Papa's elves said Sarah's voice as she spoke. The mist world then vanished as suddenly as it had come. Above them, the stars shone bright again. The sleigh rested now in the snow, in a snow-covered square in front of a pretty red-roofed house. All about the square were tiny colleges, cottages, their windows aglow with light. Elves surrounded the sleigh. Who are these people? Is it true what we've heard? Ask Sarah, she'll know. The lamp chop smiled and waved. The elves seemed much like ordinary men and women, except 
that they had pointy ears, very wrinkled faces, and were only about half as tall as Arthur, all worn leather breeches or skirts with wide pockets from which tools and ne needles stuck out. Miss Sarah, came a voice. Is it true he won't go this year? Sarah hesitated. Well, sort of, but perhaps the lamp chops here. Be patient. Go home, please. The elves sh struggled off towards their cottages, grumbling. Not going? Huh. After all our work, the, the who chops? I'd go work somewhere else but where a plump lady in an apron busted out of the red roof house sarah are you all right going off like that though we did find your note gracious are those all lamp chops dear i'm fine mama said sarah they wouldn't let stanley come himself that's stanley there the other ones, Arthur, Stanley was flat, but he got round again. Clever, said Miss Christmas. Well, do all come in. Are you fond of hot chocolate? An excellent plan, I do see that. But, oh, he's in such a state, and with Stanley no longer flat, Miss Christmas sighed. More chocolate, lamb chops. I added a dash of cinnamon. Tasty, yes. Delicious, said Miss Lamptop. Everyone sat silent, sipping. Mr. Lamptop felt the time had come. May we see him now, Miss Christmas? We should be getting home so much to do this year, time of year. You, you forgot where you are, George, said Miss Lamptop. Miss Christmas surely is aware of the demands of the season. I'm sure... I'm sorry about not being flat, Stanley said. I did get tired of it, though. No need to apologize, said Miss Christmas. Flat, round, whatever, people must be what shape they wish. So true, said Miss Lamptop. But will your husband agree? We shall see. Come, Miss Christmas rose, and the Lamptops followed her down the hall. Miss Christmas knocked on a door. Vita's Visitors, dear, from America, sent them back, said a deep voice. Sir, Mr. Lamptop tried to sound cheerful. A few minutes, perhaps, tis the season to be jolly, eh? We, bah, said the voice, go home. What a terrible temper, Stanley said. He doesn't want to meet us at all. I already have met him once, Arthur whispered, in a department store. That wasn't the real one, dear, Miss Lamptop said. Too bad, said Arthur. He was much nicer than this one. Sarah stepped forward. Papa, can you hear me, Papa? I hear you all right, said the deep voice. Took the great sleigh without permission, didn't you, rascal? The letter on your wall, Papa, Sarah said. The Lamptop letter. Well, they're here, the whole family. It wasn't easy, Papa. I went down their chimney and scraped my knee, and then I banged it the same knee when I... Sarah, said the voice. Sarah hushed, and so did everyone else. The flat boy, eh? said the voice. Hmm. Miss Lampchop took a comb from her bag and tidied Arthur's hair. Mr. Lampchop straightened Stanley's collar. Come in said the voice behind the door. The room was very dark, but it was possible to make out a desk at the far side and someone sit seated behind it. Behind it. The lamp tops held their breaths. This was perhaps the most famous person in the world. Guess what, Papa, said Sarah, sounding quite nervous. The... Lamp tops, no names for our reindeer. No answer came. Names, Papa, not just numbers. There's dashes and franches and da dasher, said Stanley. Then dancer, then, then Francis, cried Sarah. 
sir, or is it prances? Then, waste of time, this, said the figure behind the desk. But then a switch clicked. The lights came on. The lamp top stared, except for a large TV in one corner and a speaker box on the desk. The room was much like Mr. Lampchop's study at home. There were bookshelves and comfortable chairs, framed letters, one of them Stanley's, hung behind the desk, along with photographs of Miss Christmas, Sarah, and Elves, and Reindeer, singingly and in groups. Sarah's father was large and stout, but otherwise not what they had expected. He wore a blue zip jacket, with N pole athletic club letters across it and sat with his feet and fuzzy brown slippers up on the desk. His long white hair and beard were in need of trimming and the beard had crumbs in it. On the desk along with his feet were a plate of cookies, a bowl of potato chips and a bottle of strawberry soda with the straw in it. George Lampchop, sir, said Mr. Lampchop. Good evening. May I present my wife, Harriet, and our son, Stanley and Arthur? How do you do, Sarah's father, sipped his soda. Whichever is Stanley, step forward, please, and turn about. Stanley stepped forward and turned about. You're round, boy. I blew him up, said Arthur, with a bicycle pump. Sarah's father raised his eyebrows. Very funny, very funny indeed, he ate some potato chips. Well, what brings you all here? Mr. Lampchop cleared his throat. I understand, Mr. No, that, that can't be right. What is the proper form of address? Depends where you're from. Santa is the American way, but I'm known also as Father Christmas, Pierre Noel, Babo, Natale, uh, Julency, Little Country, way off somewhere. They call me the Great Hugo Wugo, Wugo, Hugo Wugo, Arthur laughed loudly, and Miss Lampchop shook her head at him. Mr. Lampchop continued, We understand, Sir Santa if I may, that you propose not to make your rounds this year. We are here to ask that you reconsider. Reconsider, said Sarah's father. The way things are these days? Huh. See for yourself. The big TV in the corner clicked on, and he switched from channel to channel. The first channel showed battleships firing flaming missiles, the second airplanes dropping bombs, the third cars crashing other cars. Then came buildings burning, people begging for food, people hitting each other, people firing pistols at policemen. The last channel showed a game show, men and women in chicken costumes grabbing for prizes in a pool of mud. Sarah's father switched off the TV. Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Been wasting my time, it seems. You have been watching far too much television, said Mrs. Lampchop. No wonder you take a dim view of things. Facts are facts, madam. Everywhere, violence and greed. Huh. Right here in my own office, a whole family come begging for Christmas treats. The lamp chops were deeply shocked. I'm greeting sometimes, said Stanley, but not always. I'm quite nice, actually, Arthur said, and Stanley's even nicer than me. I, dear, said Miss Lamptop, nicer than I. Mr. Lamptop, finding it hard to believe that he was at the North Pole having a conversation like this, chose his words with care. You misjudge us, sir, he said. There is indeed much violence in the world and selfishness, but not everyone. We lamb chops, for example. Ha! Different are you, Sarah's father spoke in 
to the little box on his desk. Yo, L4. Awad. Central files, said a voice from the box. Ewad here. Ewad said Sarah's father. Check this year's letters under USA. Bring me the laptop file. <clears throat> Elf Ewad had come and gone, leaving behind a large brown folder. Not greedy, laptops. We shall see. Sarah's father drew a letter from the folder and read it out loud. Dear Santa, my parents say I can't have a real car until I'm grown up. I want one now, a big red one. Make that two cars, both red, huh? Hear that? Shameful. Miss Lampshock shook her head. I should be interested, she said, to learn who wrote that letter. It is signed, hmm, Frederick, Frederick Lampop. Stanley left. Her name's not Lamp Pop. And we don't even know any Fredericks. Mistakes do happen, you know. I get millions of letters, Sarah's father drew from the folder again. Ah, this one's from you. Dear Santa, he read. I hope you are fine. I need lots of gifts this year. Shoes and socks and shirts and pants and underwear, and big tents, at least a hundred of each would be nice. A hundred, there's, there's greediness. It does seem a bit much, Danley, said Mr. Lambchop. And why tents, for goodness sake? You'll see, said Stanley. Sarah's father read on. Of each would be nice but not delivered to my house. It was on TV about a terrible earthquake in South America where all the houses fell down and people lost all their clothes and don't have anywhere to live. Please take everything to where the earthquake was. Thank you. Your friend, Stanley Lampchuk. P.S. I would send my old clothes, but they are mostly from when I was flat and wouldn't fit anybody else. Good for you, Stanley, said Miss Lamptop. A fine idea. The tents. <sighs> One letter, that's all. Sarah Father chose another letter. This one's got jam on it. Excuse me, said Arthur. I was eating a sandwich. Dear Santa, Sarah's father read. I have hung up a pillowcase instead of a stocking. Huh? The old pillowcase trick? Wait, cried Arthur. Read the rest. Instead of a stocking, please fill this up with chocolate bars, my favorite kind with nuts. My brother Stanley is writing to you about an earthquake and now and how people there need clothes and tents and things. Well, I think they need food too and little stoves to cook on. So please give them the chocolate bars, and food and stoves. The bars should be the kind. It doesn't matter about the nuts. Sincerely, Arthur Lampchop. Miss Lampchop gave Arthur a little hug. All right, two letters, said, said Sarah's father. But from brothers, count as one, really. He took the last letter from the folder. Nice penmanship, this one, Mr. and Mrs. George Lampchop. Now there's a surprise. Well, why not, said Miss Lampchop. Mr. Lampchop said, no harm, eh? Just dropping a line. Their letter was read. Dear sir, perhaps you expect letters from children only, since as people grow older, they often begin to doubt that you truly exist. But when our two sons were very small and asked if you were real, we said yes. And if they were to ask again now, we would not say no. We would say that you are not real, of course, for those who do not believe in you, but very real indeed for those who do. Our Christmas wish is that you will never have cause to doubt that Stanley and Arthur Lapchop and their parents take the 
ladder position. Sincerely, Mr. and Mrs. George Laptop, USA. Sarah's father thought for a moment. Hmm. Ladder p position. Uh, do belie believe I see. See, Papa, said Sarah. No, greediest, not one. Fine letters, Sarah, I agree. There was sadness in the deep voice now. But all, Sarah, from the same family that thought to deceive me with that flatness story. Flat indeed. Miss Lamptop gasped. Deceive? Oh, no. Round as round, madame. Sarah's father shook his head. The lad's shape speaks for itself. The hearts of all the laptops sank within them. Their mission had failed, they thought. For millions and millions of children all over the world, a joyful holiday was lost, perhaps never to come again. Arthur felt especially bad. It was his fault, he told himself, for thinking of that bicycle pump. Stanley felt worst of all if only he hadn't grown tired of being flat, hadn't let Arthur blow him ar around, around again, if only there were proof. And then he remembered something. Wait, he shouted, and stood on tip tiptoe to whisper in Miss Lamptop's ear. What? She said. I can't. The what? Oh, yes, I have had forgotten. Good for you, Stanley. Rummaging in her bag, she found her wallet from which she drew a photograph. She gave it to Sarah's father. Do keep that, she said. We have more at home. The snapshot had Stanley taken by Mr. Lambchop the day after the big bulletin board fell on Stanley. It showed him quite flat, sliding under a closed door. Only his top half was visible, smiling up at the camera. The bottom half was still behind the door. For a long moment, as Sarah's father studied the picture, no one spoke. My apologies, Lamp Chops, he said at last. Flat he w is, was, anyhow. I've half a mind to, he signed. <sighs> but those red cars asking for two, that... That was Lamp Pop, cried Arthur. Not just teasing, lad. Sarah's father had jumped up. A gray smile on his face. Yoel's, he shouted into his speakerphone. Prepare to load gifts. Look lively. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve, you know. The next moments were joyful indeed. Thank you, thank you. Hooray, 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 shouted Mr. and Mrs. Lamp Chop, and Stanley, Arthur, and Sarah. Sarah's mother kissed everyone. Miss Laptop kissed Sarah's father and almost fainted when she realized what she had done. Then Sarah's father asked Stanley to autograph the sliding under the door picture. And when Stanley had written all best wishes as Lamp Chop across the picture, he pinned it to the wall. Blew him round a... Eh? He said to Arthur, like to, ha like to have seen that. He turned to Sarah, come, my dear. While I freshen up, teach me those reindeer names, then I will see our visitors safely home. A crowd of elves had gathered with Miss Christmas and Sarah to say goodbye. Bless you, lamp chops, they called. Thank goodness you came. Thank Think if you hadn't, whew, farewell, farewell. In the great sleigh, Sarah's father took up the reins. Ready, lamp chops? He made a fine appearance now, his hair and beard combed, and wearing a smart green cloak and cap. The famous red suit, he had explained, was reserved for delivering gifts. Goodbye, everyone, called Miss Lamp Chop. We will remember you always. You bet, cried Stanley. I'll never forget. But you will, dear, said Miss L Christmas. You will all forget. Hardly, Mr. Lamptop smiled. An evening like this does not slip one's mind. Papa will see to it, actually, said Sarah. Snow City, all of us here, we're supposed to be, you know, sort of a mystery. 
Isn't that silly? I mean, if... Sarah, her father said, we must go. The laptops looked up at the night sky, still bright with stars, then turned for the last sight of the little red-roofed house behind them. And all of the elves' cottages about the snowy square. We are ready, said Mr. Lambchop. Goodbye, goodbye, called Miss Lambchops and Stanley and Arthur. Goodbye, goodbye, called the elves, waving. The eight reindeer tossed their heads, jingling their harness bells. One bell flew off, and Stanley caught the little silver cup in his hand. Suddenly, as before the jingling stopped, all was silent, and a pale mist rose again about the sleigh. Sarah's father's voice rang clear. Come, Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, come, Comet, Cupid, Donner, and, uh, what's the name? Blitzen, Stanley called. Thank you. Come, ben Blitzen, the Miss World, closing upon the sleigh. The lamp, shop, lamp tops all remarked the, ne remarked the next morning on how soundly they had slept and how late. Mr. Lampchop ate breakfast in a rush. Will you be all day at the office, George? Miss Lampchop asked. It is Christmas Eve, you know. There is so much to do, said Mr. Lampchop. I will be kept late, I'm afraid. But there was little to comply him at his office since a practical joker had left word he would not be in. He was home by noon to join friends and family for carol singing about the neighborhood. Mr. Lamptop had the carolers and for hot chocolate, which was greatly admired. She had added cinnamon, she explained. The ideal had just popped into her head. The carolers were all very jolly, and Frank Smith, who lived next door, made everyone laugh. The lamp chops hardest of all by claim calming he had by claiming he had seen reindeer on their lawn the night before. On Christmas morning they opened their gifts to each other and gifts from relatives and friends, then came a surprise for Stanley and Arthur. Mr Lamp Chop had just turned on the T V news. And now a flash from South America, from where the earthquake was, the announcer was saying. Homeless villagers here are giving thanks this morning for a tremendous supply of socks, shirts, underwear, and food. They have also received a thousand tents and a thousand little stoves to cook on. The screen showed a homeless villager looking grateful. The tents and the little stoves, the vill villagers said. Just what we need. Bless whoever sends these tents and stoves. Also the many tasty chocolate bars with nuts. He's blessing me, cried Stanley. I asked for tents in my letter, but I wasn't sure it would work. Well, I wrote about stoves, Arthur said, and chocolate bars, but they didn't have to have nuts. Happy coincidence, thought Mr. and Mrs. Lamptop, smiling at each other. Christmas dinner shared with various aunts, uncles, and cousins was an enormous meal of turkey, yams, and three kinds of pies. Then everyone went ice skating in the park. By bedtime, Stanley and Arthur were more than ready for sleep. A fine holiday, said Mr. Lamptop, tucking Arthur in. Yes, indeed, Miss Lamptop tucked and Stanley. Pleasant dreams, boys, and what's this? She had found something on the table by his bed. Why, it's a little bell, a silver bell. It was in my pocket, Stanley said. I don't know what it's from. Pretty, good night, you two, said Miss Lampchop, and switched off the light. The brothers lay silent for a moment in the dark. Stanley, Arthur said. It was a nice holiday, don't you think? Extra nice, said Stanley, but why? It's as if I have something wonderful to remember, but can't think of what. Me too. Merry Christmas, Stanley. Merry Christmas, Arthur, said Stanley, and soon they were both asleep.
the end. Turn the page for a sneak peek at Lat Stanley, his original adventure. Breakfast was ready. I will go wake the boys, Miss Lamptop said to her hus husband, George Lamptop. Just then, their younger son, Arthur, called from the bedroom. He shared with his brother, Stanley, Hey, come and look, hey. Mr. and Mrs. Laptop were both very much in favor of politeness and careful speech. Hey is for horses, Arthur, not people, Mr. Laptop said as they entered the bedroom. Try to remember that. Excuse me, Arthur said, but look. He pointed to Stanley's bed. Across it lay the enormous bullet board, board that Mr. Laptop had given the boys at a Christmas ago so th that they could pin up pictures and messages and maps. It had fallen during the night on top of Stanley. But Stanley was not hurt. In fact, he would still have been sleeping if he had not been woken by his brother's shout. What's going on here? He called out cheerfully from beneath the enormous board. Mr. and Mrs. Laptop hurried to lift it from the bed. Heavens, said Miss Lambtop. Gosh, said Arthur. Stanley's flat. As a pancake, said Mr. Lambtop. Darndest thing I've ever seen. Let's all have breakfast, Miss Lambtop said. Then Stanley and I will go see Dr. Dan and hear what he has to say. In his office, Dr. Dan examined Stanley all over. How do you feel, he asked. Does it hurt very much? I felt sort of tickly for a while after I got up, Stanley Lamptop said. But I feel fine now. Well, that's mostly how it is with these cases, says Dr. Dan. We'll just have to keep an eye on this young fellow, he said when he had finished the examination. Sometimes we doctors, despite of all our years of training and experience can only marvel at how little we really know. Miss Lamptop said as Miss Lamptop said she thought Stanley's clothes would have to be altered by the tailor now. So Dr. Dan told his nurse to take Stanley's measurements. Miss Lamptop wrote them down. Stanley was four feet tall, about a foot wide and a half inch thick. Thank <laughs> you.